Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 446, Estrogen is Good for You. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. We were just in Miami for a conference of the American Age Management Medical Group. And while we were there, we heard a presentation from Dr. Robert True, uh, MD, he's uh, FACOG and AACS, which is the American Cosmetic Academy Surgery. of Cosmetic Surgery. Mm-hmm. And he had a presentation summarizing all of the relevant research about hormone replacement. The hormone that he was focusing on in in his research was estrogen replacement. And there were some truly uh, interesting changes in the perception of the medical community and in the knowledge base that we have now about how estrogen impacts your health and your longevity. So Dr. Dr. True put all of this information and into one small lecture, but he had all the very important sightings for all the research. So he showed us the research and then he showed us the numbers, the percentages of what estrogen can do after menopause for women's health. It's a preventive measure and that it prevents osteoporosis, heart disease, cancer of every kind. Uh, It also prevents frailty, you know, kind of not being able to walk and having to use a walker. Um, it decreased uh, intestinal cancers. And this is all found in research since 1996. Yeah. So what the summary conclusion was that estrogen is good for women, that it produces a situation where they are less at risk to have heart attacks and strokes than men are as long as they've not gone through menopause because they have estrogen. Once they've gone through menopause and if they do not replace their estrogen, then their uh, risk factors match those of men. So your, your risk for getting a stroke or heart attack comes up to the same level that any man's would be mm-hmm. unless you get replacement estrogen. If you replace that hormone for a period of 10 years, then you add Two years to your life? Yes. Two years to your to life. To your length, your longevity. Uh, in terms of heart disease. But then the other issues like osteoporosis mm-hmm. and diabetes, also he had add research. Add years to your life. Add, add years to your life. So he quoted a number of different reference pieces that are relevant. Uh, he began by a review of the Women's Health Initiative because that was a major turning point in our understanding about replacing hormones. It scared everybody. I mean, basically, it the headlines. scared the doctors. They well, it scared the doctors. They quit. They they canceled the research early. Yeah. And they didn't run the full course of the research because the results that they were getting back were they concluded these results are telling us that giving women estrogen after they've gone through menopause makes them more likely to get breast cancer. And so they canceled the research yeah. and they sent messages out to doctors all over the world. My God, don't give people estrogen after they've gone through a menopause because they'll all die from breast cancer. So everybody became frightened. And And, and that information was wrong (laughs) wrong because it was the part of the study where people had estrogen and progestin, Provera. Mm -hmm. So that part of the study, yes, they did have more breast cancer, but the part of the study that went on, they did do this part of the, they continued the arm of the study where women just took estrogen. Those people who have had a hysterectomy don't need the progestin to to protect their uterus. Mm -hmm. So they took just estrogen and that arm of the study went on. And that arm of the study showed what we're talking about today, a decrease in all the different diseases basically that cause our death as we get older. And if we can replace it, it decreases our risk of any of those diseases or death. The 
what they didn't say was progesterone, not progesterone, but progestin, like agestin or Provera, are the hormones that cause the increase in breast cancer. Right. And everybody acts like, I mean, yep. every everybody who hasn't read the study, everybody who hasn't read the study where they've said, uh-oh, we were wrong, all the doctors that haven't read that part still don't believe it, and they won't give their patients estrogen. So they're, in fact, putting them at risk of dying of something. Mm -hmm. Because the, the medical associations and the national news media all sort of aggressively preached that conclusion. They love a crisis. It was a crisis. It was a crisis. It was, but a, mis they it was a, misinterpreted a misinterpreted crisis. It was a misinterpreted crisis, but it was a legitimate crisis. What they haven't done is pay the same attention to the correction. Right. You know, when the correction comes out six months later and says, oh, we were wrong. That's on the back page. That's on the back page somewhere in small <laughs> font. So a lot of doctors truly believe this because that's what they were taught in the middle of a medical crisis. And they still practice with that information, although it's 12, 15 years later now mm -hmm. and people know better. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the FDA, in response to this as well, passed a, a recommendation that if women were going to receive estrogen, they receive the smallest amount for the least amount of time possible. And what the studies are now showing, and, I mean, and they and did that, that was, without any research. That was research. done without any research. They just they said, just said oh, well, well, I bad, think we'll just tell this. people this. Yeah. So that made no sense. Right. Because you have to keep taking it to continue the protection right. of estrogen throughout your life. So, so that is something that's very important. And they completely missed it. The FDA which I would think would do studies about this before they'd start making these recommendations, just said that. And then American College of OBGYN said the same thing. So at first it was two years. Then it was six years. Now it's 10 years. So they just keep saying, oh, it's a longer period of time that you can take estrogen. But at first, that's saying, all the doctors it. heard. And then if you do take, you if take you have as to take little, it, just take a little. But there's no research to back that up. No. You have to bring people's estrogen back to the level of what they had when they were cycling to so, actually there, make a difference. There is research to back these statements up. Yes. And th this was in the information that Dr. True presented as well. He said, if you replace after after menopause, if you're female and you – well, you'd have to be female. If you're, yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you replace your estrogen for as long as 10 years, you can reduce your chances of getting osteoporosis by 36%. You can reduce your chances for total kinds of cancer by 24%, urinary tract infections by 60%, and diabetes by 35%. So estrogen I mean, replacement alone can guard you against those mm -hmm. illnesses that can kill you. And that's what, you know, we combine estrogen with testosterone, which also mm -hmm. helps cancer rate go down and does a lot of other things for you, plus helps osteoporosis even more. So those two things together help our patients prevent diseases that might get them as they get older. So hopefully we're, we're helping people save, save their life yes. by giving this. Well, the final results from the WHI study and 30 other studies that Dr. Mm -hmm. True evaluated mm -hmm. and presented the results from said there's a 40% reduction of all-cause mortality so in women that who means, take estrogen replacement for 10 years or more. So that means... Everything that can kill you, and anything, not just the things we've discussed, mm -hmm. anything that can kill you drops by 40% if you take estrogen. That's easy. And the question about having a uterus, yeah. I think I need to address that. All right. If you have a uterus and you need progesterone to protect it, there are several methods that you can use to do that. One is... You can take Prometrium, which is a prescription approved by the FDA that's natural progesterone in peanut oil. If you can't take peanut oil, then you need to use a, bi a compounded progesterone, which you can get from compounding pharmacies under the tongue, in the vagina. You can, there's lots of different ways to, to uh, replace it to help your uterus. Or you can get a Mirena IUD. I know that it's not for pregnancy. It's for uh, Marinas have little a little package of slowly dissolving progesterone, and they put it inside the uterus, and that keeps the lining from thickening and becoming cancerous. So that's another way to do it. But you still need progesterone, not progestin, not Provera, not Agestin. You still need progesterone when you are taking estro estradiol, which is the estrogen that, that is recommended. 
So this is how you keep your uterus safe if you have one. If you don't have one, I don't recommend taking progesterone unless you can't sleep, and progesterone helps people sleep. Right. So that's the safest way to do it. That's a little outside of what Dr. True talked about. Right. But um, one of the things that he said that he quoted, which I think is really important, is what we live by at BioBalance Health, and that is the Hippocrates, the Hippocrates quote. And that is, so this is 2,500 years ago. Um, the quote of Hippocrates, the father of medicine, was the, the role of a physician is to prevent disease. That being impossible, we can't prevent everything, to cure it, and if that is too impossible, to relieve pain. That's the oath that we take when we graduate from medical school. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. However, it seems like everybody's busy just so Hippocrates says relieving pain. we'll do everything that we can to prevent, prevent disease. disease. But if people get diseases, then we'll do everything we can to cure them. Mm -hmm. And if we can't do that, then we'll do palliative care. We'll just fight their pain while they suffer from the disease. Right. And that's that's and the role. medicine today still follows that. I mean, every doctor swears that oath. Yes, but they don't really think about prevention because we don't have a preventive medicine kind of uh, medical community. I mean, that's not what we're really trying. But in a number of our recent health casts, we've mm -hmm. had a conversation about the the current shifting mm -hmm. in medical thinking and medical approaches mm -hmm. from symptom relief and fighting specific illnesses mm -hmm. to lifestyle changes that focus more on global health care. Mm -hmm. so that we can prevent or avoid diseases. And I don't think doctors can prevent disease by themselves. They need the, they need the work of the patient. Yeah. And the patient has to be engaged. You can't, I can't make someone better and prevent diseases if they floor. go, I'm going to eat whatever I Put want. Put that piece of cake away. I've, I've yeah. had, a couple, I've had yeah. a couple guys that I've just said, well, I, I can't treat you. Yeah. They've said, I'm going to drink my 12-pack every night. I'm, I'm not stopping that. I'm never going to exercise. And all I eat is like lard and red meat. I went, sorry, can't help you. You have to help me. Mm -hmm. And I can't make that work. So right. there will still be sick people because there's still people that sure. believe that. Absolutely. But patients have to engage. They have to exercise like we did this morning. They have. I mean, no matter whether you love exercise or not, you have to do it. That's part of our bodies need exercise and our bodies need good food, fresh right. food. So. So not only do we need our hormones, but we also need the other things Diet, exercise, that we make lifestyle. choices about ourselves. Yeah. So, but the estrogen would greatly reduce the diseases that we have now. Well, and the Mayo Clinic in 2009, uh, mm -hmm. 2009 determined that there was a 44% increase in chances of death, all-cause mortality, if you did not replace your estrogen. And there was a 35% decrease in all causes of mortality if you did decrease your estrogen. If you did replace it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I said That's that. That's okay. Yeah. So if you did replace your estrogen. So. so please give thought to that and talk to your doctors about that. And if they feed you the line from the Women's Health Initiative, then it's just not good or it's not good for, we want to give you the minimum amount and for the least amount of time. Let them know that current medical research has blown all of that perspective away and now says you should have adequate amounts of estrogen for 10 years or more beyond menopause. And for every year that you keep taking it, you, you improve your life expectancy. Mm -hmm. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.